everybody, this is Christine. Um, we're going to do the recording for the skill of NG tube insertion. So what I have done is I've just gathered my supplies beforehand. I have verified my patient order, make sure that it makes sense for my patient um, before I even gather my supplies. So knock, knock, knock. I enter into the patient's room. Hi, Dan. My name is Christine. I'm going to be your nurse today, okay? She says, okay. So first off, before I get things going, I'm just going to verify um, your name and date of birth, okay? So can you just tell me um, your name and date of birth? She says, Dan Brown, the date of birth matches. Perfect. Okay. Do you have any allergies, Dan? She says, no. Okay, good. So um, you came in today because you were having issues with nausea and vomiting, correct? Yep. Okay, and they found you to have a small bowel obstruction when you were downstairs in the ER. Um, and they said, oh, they put in, those results came back when you came up here, and we're going to put in an NG tube, okay? She says, okay. All right, so the first thing that I'm going to do, Dan, is I'm going to go ahead and sit you up, okay? So we want him sitting up at a 90-degree angle if possible. If unconscious or can't tolerate the 90-degree angle, we could do a side lying um, and 60 degrees if possible would be what we would like. Okay, so he is now sitting up. So with your small bowel obstruction, basically what doctors order is an NG tube. The purpose of the NG tube is so that we can suck out everything that's kind of sitting in your stomach, all the secretions and things like that, and that'll hopefully help make you feel better, okay? She says yes. Um, so, have you ever had an NG tube placed before? No, okay. So what it is, it's a tube that's gonna be placed um, through your nose, down the back of your throat, down your esophagus, and into your stomach, and like I said, We'll hook it up to suction and kind of um, get rid of all the secretions and stuff that are in there, and that'll hopefully help alleviate um, your nausea and vomiting, okay? Um, doctor hasn't stated whether or not he'll do surgery yet. That's something he'll talk with you about later. But um, for right now, that's what we're going to do to help make you feel better, okay? And she says, okay. Do you have any questions about what's going to happen? I'm going to talk you through it as we go. She says, nope. All right. So can you first tell me if um, sometimes, I'm not going to lie, this is not a comfortable procedure. So um, it does cause people to gag, you know, and they get a little teary, stuff like that, and cough and stuff. If I'm at a point where it's too much and you need me to stop for a moment, um, are you able to raise your hand for me? She says, sure, okay. So if at any point during the procedure you need me to stop, you just raise that hand, okay? She says, sure. All right, so first thing is first, I'm gonna bring my supplies over to the bedside here. I am going to go ahead and cover you with a chux. And this is just also because sometimes with that gagging that may occur, some people do vomit. So I like to keep you nice and clean, okay? I'm also going to give you an emesis basin just in case. As well as I've got a cup with water in it here for you. Um, this might be one of those skills where you want another set of hands just because um, you're going to be busy putting the NG tube in. You really don't have a hand to hold the water. Maybe your patient isn't able to hold the water for you. So having an assistive um, person come in is always a great idea. So we're gonna pretend that this is in his hand here because he is able to do it for me. Okay, so the water is there because when I insert the NG tube, I'm gonna um, tell you to swallow, swallow, swallow. And by swallowing water, it helps facilitate um, that NG tube going down into your stomach, okay? If my patient were NPO, I could have them dry swallow. So that is that. All right, let's see here. I've gathered all the supplies I need. I have my NG tube. I checked the size of it because I'm going to have to document that. Um, I have my pH strips just to check the pH of the contents of the stomach when I draw it up. I also have my pen light because in a minute I am going to go ahead and check his mares. Um, have you ever had any um, nose surgery? Um, are you aware that you have a septal defect? Anything like that? says no. All right. There we go. All right. I'm just going to take a look in his nose. I don't see anything there. I'll have him maybe hold one finger on a nostril, blow, or suck in. Same thing with the other one. He does that. No issues. Does it matter to you which um, side of your nose I use? He says no. I say, okay, I'm right-handed. I'm going to go ahead and go on your right side of the nose there because that'll be easiest for me to do. And he's all good with that. The next thing I need to do is prepare my tape. Some facilities have um, these wonderful securement devices that can go on the nose and then it kind of latches in there. Um, 
after you get it in. Um, but if you don't, tape always works too. So I'm gonna go ahead and tear it down the middle because we'll secure it that way. And then I'm gonna grab one more piece of tape that I am going to use to mark my NG tube once I have it measured. pH ready for me here. Alright, I'm going to grab a couple tissues for you as well. See what I mean? Their hands are going to be full. <laughs> so, and I also want him to be able to signal to me if he's struggling. So another person never hurts with this stuff. Alright, so next what I'm going to do, Dan, is I'm just going to measure your NG tube so I know how far to insert it. So with this, what we do is we go from the point of the tip of the nose to the ear lobe down to the xiphoid process and then it's hard to tell in these mannequins on a real person you can definitely feel it much better but I feel for the umbilicus and then about halfway between the xiphoid process and the umbilicus is where I'm going to mark my NG tube. All right, so I've got that piece of tape that I prepared earlier that I'm gonna go ahead and put on there. That way I know when to stop. All right, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lubricate my tube. So um, in, you'll just grab something like this. It's a lubricating jelly that you'll use on your patient. For our mannequins, we use a spray though. So here, that, that's just a little difference here. I'm gonna go ahead and spray. You do about four to five inches of your tube. Let's see. Right. Just like this. All right, Dan. Are you ready? No. Yeah, nobody was ever ready for this. I apologize. But we're gonna do this, okay? And I promise it's gonna make you feel better. All right, do you remember you can raise your hand if you need me to stop for any, um, if it, it becomes too much for you, okay? Just let me know. All right. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to insert the end of the tube right in towards the ear on the side that I'm going in and kind of go through that little clip or throat. Tilt his head forward a little bit. Now what I want you to do, Dan, is I'm going to have you swallow, okay? So as I tell him to swallow, he's going to be swallowing, swallow, 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 swallow. Great job, Dan. Keep going. Let's say he raises his hand. Are you doing okay? Oh, I just needed a break. Okay. What I can do is, let's say I came across maybe um, resistance. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look in the back of the throat, make sure it's not coiled up there. It's not coiled up. If he were to still be coughing and gagging, I can pull my tube a little bit to the point of, you know, just above. Gives me time to relax a little bit. Um, okay, are you ready to go again, Dan? Do you notice the whole time I'm holding on to the tube at the, the point of the tip of the nose there? Because the progress that I've made so far, I don't want to lose it. Uh, but he just needs a little break. So, Dan, are you ready to go again? Yep. Okay, here we go. Bring up the cup, swallow, 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 swallow. Great job, Dan, we're where he needs to be. Okay, so I'm just gonna wipe some of the lubricant off my hand here. I'm going to grab my tape. And I'm gonna go ahead and put it on his nose there. And wrap your head around that little tube here. So I would probably cut this little piece off here because that's just the excess from me marking my, my tube for the tape. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and change my gloves real quick here. Dan, are you doing okay? Just this, yep, all right, good. I'm just gonna change my gloves real quick here. Put your hands on here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna verify for placement. Now, depending on your facility, um, there may be a number of ways. The gold standard, which you're always gonna do probably no matter where you work, is send them off for an x-ray for NG tube placement, okay? So that is one thing we're gonna do. One of the things that I do initially as well is I have a piston syringe here. I fill it with about 30 cc's of air or so. I go ahead and I put it 
on the end of my tube. So I have it ready for me. I'm going to go ahead and put my ears in. Put it over the stomach. And I'm going to listen for the swoosh. Okay. That is not, um, sorry, I need to take this out. Watch out. That is not concrete evidence that you're in the right place. What I could also do while I'm here is, you know, after I put the ear in, I could aspirate, you know, 15, 30 mLs of stomach contents. And you notice each time I come back to the tube, I'm clamping it with my finger so that I don't make a mess everywhere. Okay. So I have a little bit of stomach contents that I can put on my pH paper. If that's what my facility has me do as well, I compare with my pH. It should be between one and four. Maybe if there's somebody that has the NV tube in because they're getting feedings, that may be it. The pH may be up to five, but if it's higher than that, then generally I'm not in the right spot, okay? So let's say my patient went off to x-ray. They came back. I got a phone call that said, yep, you're in the right place. Okay, great, good to go. So Dan, they told us that um, your NG tube is in the right place. Now I'm gonna hook it up to suction, okay? Sure, all right. So I've got my connector right here. I'm just gonna set my suction. Depending on what the order is, it may be low intermittent, low continuous, medium, that kind of thing, but typically it's low intermittent, so I make sure I have it set appropriately. My suction is working. I'm going to go ahead and clamp back here again, open up, hook him up to the suction. All right. I'm gonna make sure it's secure to his gown. You can either do that before or after. It is all dependent kind of on how the flow is and stuff like that, but you wanna make sure that, oh, there's just something taking over in front of me, that you do have it secure in place. Otherwise, if you don't secure it beforehand, that you let um, the x-ray tech know that you just haven't secured it yet. But as soon as you verify placement, you definitely want to start, um, you definitely want to have it secured. All right, so I am just going to thread a piece of tape along here. I'm gonna pin it through the tape and then pin it to a spot on his gown that still leaves him enough flexibility to move his head back and forth. Um, because otherwise, imagine if it's pinned kind of tight there and he turns his head, that's gonna pull your tube out. So you wanna make sure that you give your patient enough slack to move their head back and forth. It's secured in his gown. So again, something to be mindful of when you're changing his gown to disconnect, okay? All right, Dan, let me just clean up the area here. You did a fantastic job. All right, now as well, depending on your facility, and I don't believe that this is in your checklist, but a lot of facilities are going to this, so I wanna show you this. Um, a lot of places are now requiring that you measure the NG tube after insertion. So what you would do is, it's just a way of like every shift of verifying that the tube hasn't moved. So you're gonna measure from the point of insertion and you're just gonna keep pulling it along the tube. Just like so. And basically you're measuring how much of that tube is outside of your patient. And they always do that in front of me there. Okay, so this would be how you would um, measure how much is outside of the body. Okay, so that is another thing that they do every shift. Just again, verify that nothing has moved anywhere. Um, I'm going to wash my hands. I'd ask him if he would like to provide himself with oral care. Otherwise, I could do it for him. I would take gloves on then if I was going to do that for him. Um, at any point, I could take my pen compressor to verify that it's in fact, which we already did. We took a look at it with our pen light earlier, and it's still good. Um, his NG is hooked to suction. I'm making note of any kind of drainage that is being pulled from it. I'm going to make sure document the color, the odor, the consistency, the amount of um, stomach contents that are being pulled. Um, that I placed the NG tube in its right near. Um, it's a 14 French, this one specifically. So the size, I'm going to document how the patient tolerated it, um, as well as like the external measurement or um, how it was verified that I did the pH, that the patient was sent for um, chest x-ray for NG tube placement, um, all of those kind of things. Before I leave the room, I'm gonna make sure my patient is back in a comfortable position. 
Dan, did you want me to lay you back a little bit more? Sure. Okay. How is that? Is that okay? Yep. Okay, good. I'm going to make sure that he has his call light, um, that all of his needs are met, if he has to go to the bathroom or anything like that. And um, then I can leave his room. And like I said, vacuum all of his things. And I'm going to wash my hands and um, put everything in.